Shane Crown Show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Shut okay. There we go. All right. Well, uh, beautiful night in LA. Uh, got a little cooler today. You know, dropped down to about 68 degrees or so. But lots of excitement this week. Lots of excitement. Um, apparently, now this is in the news. I can't make this up. Apparently, restaurant in Greenville, Maine, stopped offering free sandwiches to patrons who agreed to streak down the dock and plunge naked into a nearby lake. <laughs> stopped offering free sandwiches. This makes the news, people. When people stop running around the town naked. It, and it, it just bothers me when this news comes out after the fact. I mean, think of how this could have helped people. Free sandwiches. You save on food and clothes. I mean, this is the solution to world hunger. It really is. As long as we relinquish our desire to wear clothes at the cost of a little extra freedom. Wait, you didn't think that's funny? No? OK. Uh, Murray, hit the laugh track. <laughs> Yeah, they think it's funny. They think it's funny. Boo! Hey, what, you think you're funnier than me? Yeah. Okay, well, for your information, this is called the Shane Crown Show, not the fat guy in the crowd show. So what, I'm fat now? Well, you, you want to make something of it? Yes, I do. Okay. Be right back. You made me do this. Come in. Do you have a minute, Mr. Blakeman? Yeah, sure. Sit down. What's up, Miss Pfeiffer? Well, there seems to be a problem. You see, there's... Well, I actually don't know who he is, but there's a man, and he's been sitting in on every one of my classes this semester. But I... I don't think he's enrolled in the course. Did you check with the registrar's office? I don't know his name. Well, is he a disturbance? No, no, he's a good student. He does great on all the exams. I, I just don't think he attends this university. Well, technically anyone can sit in on any of the classes. Yes, but every class? He's getting a free education. That's brilliant. I, I don't think you understand. No, I understand perfectly. He's getting a free college education. He's beat the system. Genius. Uh, no, uh, listen. I've been following him for a few weeks now. You've been stalking one of our students? He's not a student. Miss Pfeiffer, we don't discriminate at this university. No, look. He isn't paying for anything. Well, where is he living? He isn't living anywhere. He changes every night. There's no way to track him. And I, I think he's bathing in the fountain. Really? He is publicly cleaning and grooming himself in the middle of Alumni Mall. Oh, that guy. You know him? Of course, that guy is awesome. Well, that guy has completely immersed himself in the student population. They look up to him. Terrible Roma. He isn't paying for his education. Miss Pfeiffer, he is exactly what this institution needs. What? I've never seen a man more dedicated to this university. He's really brought the student body together. He's like the pantheon of the ideal student. What does that even mean? Shut up. 
That's enough. What matters is this. No, no, you listen. You have to get rid of him. Miss Pfeiffer, we can't afford to get rid of him. Excuse me? That's enough. Frankly, Miss Pfeiffer, you need to spend more time teaching and less time following this individual around. Now, I've got some real work to get to, so if you don't mind, uh... Is, uh, she gone? We're back, and uh, we got a great show for you tonight. Uh, we have Dr. Charles Doherty joining us. Uh, he's the author of the new book entitled Wind Socks and You, a comprehensive guide to what appears to be bags on sticks. <laughs> Sounds enthralling, doesn't it? I just want to crack it open right now. Also joining us, we have Rick Puma in the band, as always. Rick? Where's the band? No explanation? Okay. He never really responds to me. I don't know whether it's me or everybody. He just doesn't seem to talk. Anyway, without further ado, we have self-proclaimed doctor, Dr. Doherty. He's British. Oh, hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> this is in my book. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, it's great having you on the show. It's, um, it's a pleasure to have a writer of your caliber here. Um, now, your, your book is expected to be released this week in the U.S., is that right? That's correct. You can expect to find it in most obscure bookstores this Wednesday. All right. Um, well, it, it's been out in the U.K. for a couple months now, and it's really been received with, uh, with no success. That's right. Uh, we're looking to have a bit more success here in the States. Well, uh, well, well let's talk about the book. Um, What's your motivation for writing about wind socks? I mean, what the heck, right? Pardon? Uh, well, you seem to have a, have a passion for your, your subject, and uh, it really shows up in your writing. Like, I personally haven't, haven't read it, but I have people who do that for me, and they say that you really know what you're talking about. Yes, well, you see, for me, it's always been about the art of the wind socks. You see, people today can only think about what way the wind is blowing. It's, it's much more than that. It's the art and the soul of the sock itself and ultimately the personality of the wind within. When you hear the wind speak, you want to listen and you want to provide a vessel in which the wind can flourish in its full beauty. Whenever we find the world has left us in the dust, we need to look to the simplicity of the wind's beauty. What a wind sock is, is really an item of clothing for the wind. It's a sock, if you will. When you are out in the arms of nature, you always notice the influence that humanity has on nature. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, continue. Yes, well, my fascination with wind socks began in my early childhood on my estate in Yorkshire when I saw something dancing in the wind over the flower beds. It was all sorts of colours and its flapping pattern entranced me. My mother told me not to, hand, not to mind such things and tend to my studies, but I could not let such exotic pleasure be cast aside. I would stare at its rainbow pattern for hours at a time, trying to predict what direction it would flap in next. It took me little time to realize that the behavior oh, of nature it. does not act in such a predictable manner. Nature is like a lone fawn searching for a place, for some existence greater than that which it once knew. Oh, the true art of that? the nature of wind is captured by the wind sock. And what a better way to express the inner emotion of the soul than to make your own wind sock. Much like the people who make them, the wind socks represent vast multiculturalism that passes over continental and social boundaries. You will not find the same sort of wind sock in Romania as you would in Sri Lanka. You just wouldn't. 
now for the next up from the novel that I most recently wrote. No, no, okay. Shut up, please. I don't want my book. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, don't mean to cut you off early, but um, my producer over here is, uh, he's signaling me. He's telling me to cut to a commercial. So I have to do as he says. So uh, yeah, why don't we? Hey. Hey. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? What, you're trying to put me out of business? Is that what you're doing? Come on. What, what, what is all this? I was here weeks ago, set up my little place here, and you come now offering the same thing for free. Like, what's all this? Come on. Okay. You are going to pack up, and you are going to leave. Because you can't. No. No. This is not. No. What's all this? Okay, so I was at the Dodgers game this weekend, and I was sitting like right, right above the dugout, right? And that's just, I... Okay, so I wanted to be the first mate, but this other, this other guy was already pulling on the, pulling the anchor. So, you know, 50 bucks is a lot of money, right? And with that kind of deficit, you, you have to suck out the venom yourself. I don't think I know what you're saying. Uh, oh. All right, um, 30 seconds to okay. roll. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave now, okay? Keep talking. This portion of the show is for the audience only. So I'm going to bounce on out of here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, okay, we got lights, uh, sound. Okay, three, two, rolling. Okay, where's Shane? ...of the direction in which the windsock is pointing. Wind speed is indicated by a, the wind so I'm back. Let's roll this thing. Come on. What are you still? You still reading? Yes. You still reading? I could have read that whole book in the time you just spent talking before I left and just now. What is wrong with you? Did your mother ever teach you not to be boring? You are the most dull person I have ever met in my life. Are you even British? Are you even British? See, I thought you had at least that to hide behind, but no. I think it's fake. I think this is fake. Like, I'm sorry. Am I the only one here that, you know, is thinking that this guy might be a little, you know, on the, on the dull side? Or is that, is that just me? Is that just me? I quit. No more. Good day to you, sir. What's that all about? Who's British? 